In this video, I'm going to look at the worst answered questions from that homework. This one wasn't answered very well. Question two, to calculate the kinetic, uh, sorry, the speed of a car. We know that they have the same kinetic energy. So we can say the two k's are equal. The kinetic energy of the car, half mv squared, has got to equal the kinetic energy of the lorry, half mv squared. Halves can cancel. If we then put in the mass of the lorry, which is 4,000, and times that by its speed, which is 4 squared, that's got to be equal to the mass of the car, 1,000 times by its speed of velocity squared. Turn that into our calculator. You see that we get v squared equals 64, and so therefore v is the square root of 64. That gives us an answer of 8. This question wasn't answered very well. Now, first thing to always do is check what it's asking for. It's asking for the power. Power is equal to the work done, or the energy transferred, divided by time. If we now look at what we've got, well, we've got the time, two seconds. So we need to just work out the work done. Now, be careful, some of you might not spot this, but it lists three boxes, each weighing 100. So remember, work done is force times distance. If the total weight down of these is 300 newtons, this person is going to have to apply at least 300 newtons upwards. So the force that he applies is 300. The distance moved is 1.5, so we can work out the work done, which is 450 joules. If we then put that into our equation here, 450 divided by 2 gives me 225 watts. So that must be our answer, B. Classic question here. Um, this you've just got to learn. The source of energy and whether it's derived from the sun. Now remember, geothermal does not come from the sun. That comes from the nuclear decay of, in the earth, which heats it up. Oil did originally come from the sun, because that's dead animals. Water held from, the sun, from behind a dam also came from the sun, because the sun evaporates water. Water evaporates from the sea, evaporates up, falls as rain behind a dam. So this one, C, is the correct one. The wind did come from the sun, so that is incorrect. Just remember the ones that are not from the sun. Just learn these. Tidal, that's from the moon. And then you've also got uh, nuclear power stations and geothermal, which both come from the decay of radioisotopes. You've just got to learn those three. Those are the only three that didn't come from the sun. The rest do come from the sun. Question 15 is a classic one related to Hooke's Law and Springs. But this is actually even slightly easier. And it's just asking for the extension of the spring when a weight hung is 3 newtons. So here's the 3 newtons. You just want to know how much it's extended by. Remember the extension is just the new length minus the original length, the length when no force was on there. Okay, so in this case, if we do 533 minus the original length, which is 520, we'll get 13 millimeters. Another one that wasn't answered too well was this one. Just remember, a battery, just learn this, converts chemical energy. That's why you should never open up a battery, or if you've got a really old battery, you'll see some of it crusted in this white sort of chemical that's come out of it. So what a battery does, it turns chemical energy into electrical, which then goes around the circuit. This question was also a little challenging. It's asking for you to write a word equation to represent the energy at this point here. Well, how does the energy here relate to this energy here? Up here, we're told it's momentarily at rest, so we know that all it has is GPE. That's going to be converted into other types when it gets down here. Obviously, it's going to be moving, so we've got kinetic energy tick, and we're also going to get some heat energy loss. That'll be like air resistance, perhaps a bit of friction with the air causing it to heat up very slightly. This will be very small. What's this other one here? Well, for one option is chemical. Well, it can't be that. I mean, where is it being stored? And there's no change in the chemicals there, so it's not chemical. Gravitational potential. Well, some of you think, well, it might have lost it all. Well, no. I mean, it's still going to have gravitational potential energy. If we're measuring from here, it's still a certain height above there. If we were measuring relative to this point, and we said that was our ground, then it wouldn't. But let's leave that open, because we're not sure where we're measuring it from. Internal, well, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know what sort of internal energy it's going to have become. And strain, well, nothing's been stretched. Um, that thread hasn't got any longer, otherwise it would have said that. So it can't be that one, it can't be that one. So that does leave us, as we expected, it's gravitational energy as well. Because if you think it's still, if we're measuring from the ground here, which is probably a sensible place to measure from, the height, it still has a height, it just has less GPE. It's gone down. It still has some GPE at point Y. So 45, 
these farmers are in trouble. Sun's setting and they want to get those bales up there as quickly as possible. So what they've done is they've increased the speed of the motor. That means more bales are lifted up in a given time. So some important words there. Don't just gloss over that. Um, this important words there. There's some other things like same mass, which are important if we think about it. How does this affect, first of all, the work done in lifting each bale? So notice how it says each bale there. Well, if we think work done is just force times distance. The bells are still the same mass, as it says up here, and they're still moving the same distance. So there's some force uh, being applied to overcome that mass, and it's still moving the same distance up to there. So the work done is still going to be the same. So it's going to be one of these two over here. To change the work done, we're going to have to apply more force, and that's not happening, or move it further distance, and that's not happening. What about the power output? Well, power is the work done divided by the time taken. Okay, I shouldn't use WD, I should just use W for that. Now, the work done, we just said, is the same per, if for each bell, but because the motor is going faster, it's lifting them up in a shorter period of time. It tells you that here, so more bells are lifted in a given time, so they must be getting from here to here in a shorter time. So this number's gone down. Therefore, you can see that if we divide the same number by a smaller number, the power is going to increase. So the answer is going to be D. So it's quite a co common question when they'll ask questions like that. For example, if we take uh, a student who walks up some stairs and a student, same student who runs up some stairs, they're both going to do the same amount of work. In that, in that time, because they're, they're going the same distance and they're overcoming their same weight. But this one who goes up quicker would have more power because they're doing the same amount of work. Oh, excuse me. don't want to change our template. Same amount of work, but in a shorter time, therefore we have more power.